Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, where are the landing gear doors on the 737? And um, what is this? Stay tuned. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a website that will help you perfect your mathematical skills and your physics knowledge, so check them out. Um, if any one of you have seen a Boeing 737 takeoff, you might have noticed that as the landing gear gets fully retracted, you can still see the tires being fully exposed to the outside air. Now, why is this? Well. In order to understand this, you, once again, have to get back to when the 737 family was first constructed. So you have to go back to the 1960s. Now, when the Boeing engineers sat down to construct the 737 family, they wanted to construct an aircraft that would be easy to handle for regional airports where they might not be as equipped as it would be on the bigger international airport. Because the 737 was supposed to be built for regional airports doing short to medium haul inside of the North American continent or similar places. So what they did was they looked at the Boeing 727, which was a really successful airliner at the time. And the 727 was very low down to the ground, which made it perfect for handling bulk um, baggage, for example, just throwing it into the hold and you know using a small truck to fuel and stuff like that. So they wanted to do the same with the 737. Now, I have already spoken a little bit about this in my video about why the engines on the 737 looks flat. So check out that video if you haven't already. Um, when they had constructed the 737, or when they were constructing it, they realized that because it's so low down to the ground, there's very little room for landing gear doors that can actually cover the whole wheel section of the, of the aircraft. So they, they started looking into that, okay? They started looking into it. They asked themselves, do we really need landing gear doors to cover the wheels? Um, landing gear doors are famous for being, first of all, heavy, and second of all, quite complex. The mechanics of them are quite complex. And whenever you have something that's a little bit complex, there is a high chance of failure and for it to cause problems. So after having evaluated the options they had, they realized that we don't really need those doors. We do need doors to cover the side of the the wings, the underside of the wings, and the body. So the 737 actually does have landing gear doors. They have outer and inner landing gear doors that will cover the wings and the side, but the wheels are not covered. Now, the next problem they came across was that if you have the tires exposed to the airflow, they will potentially cause a lot of drag. Now we need to sort that out in some way. And in a typical scrappy fashion, the Boeing engineer said, well, why don't we fit big hubcaps on the outside of the tires? And that's what you saw in the beginning of the video. Those big blue hubcaps, that is the aerodynamic solution that Boeing came up with. So when the gear is being fully retracted, the outer sides of the tire together with that hubcap will form a fairly aerodynamic undersurface that will not cause much drag. So that also means that if we would have a damage to one of those hubcaps or if it would be lost for whatever reason and we're lacking one, we actually have to uh, apply some quite, no, not bad, but there are some quite significant fuel penalties to our flight plan. Okay, the next thing that we needed to sort was the fact that as the, the openings to the, um, to the wheel well bay was bigger than the gear, obviously, to let the, the, um, the tires in, there would be a potential for stuff to be thrown into the wheel well bay. And what you have to understand is that since the 737 is quite tight of room, they have a lot of critical components inside of the main wheel well. You have the hydraulic pumps, a lot of the hydraulic linings, uh, we have fire extinguishers for the engines. All of that is inside of the wheel well bay. So that needed to be protected. And they did that in three different steps, okay? The, the first step was that they, in the first models, they actually fitted a, an inflatable seal to the inside of the wheel well bay. Think a balloon, 
Okay? So as the gear was retracted, that balloon or that seal would be inflated and that would form a barrier for stuff to be thrown into the wheel well bay. Um, that turned out to not be a fantastic solution. Okay? It would break, it would leak, uh, it would puncture and whenever it did, the pilots would get a not sealed warning in the, uh, inside the cockpit and that would lead to some quite lengthy maintenance delays. So they thought, well, this wasn't great. Let's come up with a different solution. And the new solution that you will see on all 737s today is this multi-lamited kind of uh, rubber seal that you see on the inside, which is not inflated in any way, but it still forms a barrier when the gear has been retracted. So the second solution, the second uh, protection we have is in case we would have a punctured tire. Let's say that the tire would puncture. There's loads of potentially very damaging um, metal things inside of the wheels that might come rotating into the wheel well bay. And so these metal threads, they cannot, if they are entered into the wheel well bay, they could make some serious damage to our hydraulic system. So the solution to that was, and you might have seen this actually, at the back of the uh, wheel well opening, there's a little thing sticking out, okay? That's a hydraulic fuse. So if a gear would be retracted and it would be punctured and it would have spinning threads around, those spinning threads would first impact that hydraulic fuse. And by doing so, the hydraulic fuse would then release the hydraulic fluid that is used to retract the gear. So the fluid would disappear and the gear would free fall down into down position again and it would never enter the wheel well bay. The third solution is that the main wheel brakes will be applied automatically as the gear is being retracted. So it's spinning quite high speed and as it's being retracted into the gear, into the wheel well bay, the, the um, brakes will apply and stop the gear from spinning. Okay, the, the nose wheel is slightly different because the nose wheel doesn't have any brakes and there's also very few, almost no critical components inside of the nose wheel well bay. So the nose wheel, as it's being retracted, will hit what we call snubbers, which is basically two pads that are sitting at the top of the nose wheel well bay. And as the nose gear is being retracted, it will impact and kind of go up against those pads and that will slow down the, uh, or stop the nose wheel um, tires. So think big bicycle brakes. That's pretty much what it is. And that's, you might have heard this after takeoff, you can hear that kind of That's what it is, okay. Um, right, so that's the protection we have. Now, the questions that I always get uh, in, you know, around this is that, well, if the tires are not protected by any landing gear doors, aren't they subjected to the really harsh outside conditions? And the answer to that is, yeah, they are. Okay, they are subjected to both the low temperatures of high altitude, speed, wind, um, the, the, the weather, basically. But the fact is that it doesn't really matter that much. So even if there would be landing gear doors protecting the, the tires, you have to understand that the main wheel well bay is not heated. So this means that if you're climbing up to altitude and our cruising, the temperature at our cruising altitude is typically between minus 50 to minus 65 degrees centigrade. It will very quickly become that cold inside of the wheel well bay anyway, even with doors, okay? And the tires are filled with nitrogen up to a pressure of about 14 PSI, somewhere around there. Uh, so they're, they're not really susceptible to, to temperature changes. It doesn't affect it in any way. Uh, the other question that I always get is, well, what about icing? What if it ice up and you can't get the gear out? And the fact here, and what you have to understand is that a gear, sorry, a, an aircraft that enters into icing conditions, the part of the aircraft that will be iced up is going to be the exposed part, mainly the leading edges of the wings, the stabilizer and the fin, and to a certain extent, maybe the nose. I have never seen and never even heard of icing appearing on the belly of the aircraft. And if you think once more, even if it would, let's say that you would encounter some freak kind of icing conditions that would ice up the belly, it wouldn't really help to have landing gear doors because they would also be subjected to the same kind of icing. So the, the, the last thing would, you know, the question that I normally get is that, well, you know, from an aerodynamics standpoint, this cannot possibly be as good as, for example, the Airbus 320. And the answer I have to that is that the Boeing, you know, the Boeing family has been flying with this kind of solution for 
yeah, around 50 years now and it's been working fine. Um, if this would have been a big problem, then as the 737 MAX was made, I am sure that it would have come up with a solution, but the MAX has exactly the same kind of solution. And the 737 is far from alone with having this type of solution. So basically all um, aircraft that are lower down to the ground have exposed wheels and even some really high performance private jets like the Cessna Citation X for example also have exposed main gears sorry main wheels guys I hope you liked that explanation uh, I hope you like this series I'm going to continue to explain things about um, peculiar parts of the 737 in the upcoming episodes um, I want to send a special thank you to Brilliant.org who has been sponsoring this episode. If you want to perfect your math skills and your physics skills, which you will need to do in order to perfect your entry exams into pilot schools, for example, well then check out the link below. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.